Hi, I'm Shaka Hislop and you're here at Extra Time TV. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Extra Time TV. This is Andre Soklal, and today we're going to speak about the World Cup qualifier between Trinidad and Tobago and Puerto Rico, which ended 1-1. But I'm not alone. Returning with us today is Edwin Husino. What's up, Edwin? You know, uh, the chief uh, editor of Football Boricua.net. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yes, 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 you did. You did. I'm, I'm a linguistic master. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we, need to, we need to put you um, in Duolingo and start um, learning Spanish again. Yes, yes, I need to. I really honestly, and uh, you know, my, my viewers out there, and I guess your viewers as well, I have to learn, learn it properly by the end of this year. So you guys could keep me on my toes if I'm messing around. So, yes. yes, yes, keep me. So, you know, let's, let's head into the game. You know, we spoke in great detail about it, folks. You could take a look at that. We have a link in the description below. Uh, so, Edwin, uh, it's 1-1. One, one. Uh, what was your initial thoughts on the game? That I basically sat here and, and told you more or less, like 80% of, of what I said was exactly what happened on the game. Um, I, I did say that whoever won would be by a one-point differential. And I did say that, hey, we maybe maybe a, a nil-nil tie would could was also a possibility um so for everybody who was saying that five, oh train and tobago is going to win by five or six well i think i was the closest one to the actual score yes and yes that actually has me um smiling <laughs> <laughs> well listen you know i can't blame you it's a really good reason in fact I would even dare say, uh, as a trend big union, that uh, you know it could have easily been uh, full three points for Puerto Rico because yeah, it, it, they. I, I was I, I was I was uh, sur- I actually said this and we were narrating the game in in Discord um, in our watch party, mm-hmm. and I, I was actually saying to to the to the participants, I was t- I was saying, listen, I'm I'm actually um, surprised in a good way. Um, because we're not we're not parking the bus we're actually you know going out and doing exactly the that's where I, that's where I was mistaken I thought they were going to park the bus no we we went and defended by doing a proper offense mm-hmm. and 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 to me being somebody who's who's been who, who's been frustrated with their national team for a few years actually seeing a good attacking national team doing something um, correctly that was um, that that was actually awesome so you know we're, we're I personally um, like I said I was contempt I I wanted I would have wanted the three points I would have I think Puerto Rico deserved the two one um, unfortunately we had like I said we have a rubbish um, forward called Sidney Rivera. <laughs> um and you know he, he there's mixed feelings he played better but to be quite honest he's there are other players that could actually do the job better and yeah. we could have had a to one um to one goal i think the by the way that the face you know if you see the 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 game the the game um closely again mm-hmm. Um, you might actually see that after the goal, the Trinidad Tobago team were actually playing shocked. They they didn't they they weren't expecting to be tied, um, and and I think this this comes from you know having won three nil to Guyana. Maybe they thought, oh, well, this is going to be easy because supposedly Guyana is the the easier the, you know the hardest of all the teams in the in the group. And then you come to play against a very um, determined side like Puerto Rico that wants to, um, you know, make a name for itself. And then all of a sudden you're, you're, you're tied and you're second in the group and Puerto Rico is not out of the, out of the, out of the competition because it's still 
it it has a point. So n- now now we have to get our calculator calculators out um, because if um, I think it's if St. Kitts beats Trinidad, but Guyana beats St. Kitts, and Puerto Rico wins Bahamas and Guyana, then it all goes down to how many goals were scored by each team mm-hmm. in a tie in a in a in a in a hypothetical tie. So the this makes it even more interesting for when June comes. I think in terms of fandom of um, people that like football. Um, the the group is not settled. People thought, well, Trinidad and Tobago is going to win their two first games. Everything's going to be settled by then. Well, it's not. So um, June's going to come in, and we're going to have another conversation. It's and it's going to be um, it's going to be a very interesting month, the month of June. Yeah, you know, like I'm I'm just to build on what you were saying. Uh, they did look shell shocked when uh, they got. In fact. Uh, when the game started off, you said, uh, you know, and I agreed with you that they were, you know, Puerto Rico was going to uh, sit back mm-hmm. and try to play on the break. And I think they initially did. And then maybe they read the game really well and realized, you know, listen, you know, we could have a go at these yep. guys. And they yep. never let up at all. And, and, and I think, see, I, I think if we, ha- um, I think that that's the beauty of the thing uh, or, or the entire, or the entire game. Mm-hmm. It's the Sarasha and read the game perfectly. He knew not only which which changes to do, when to do them, but he noticed that Trinidad and Tobago was not not going out and you know constantly pushing um, the defense. The defense was holding. It was it was doing its job. It, you know the Trinidad and Tobago goal was by a silly communications mistake. Um, two defenders go out and defend the. the to try and 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 take the the ball away in the air, mm-hmm. leaving all open a spot for another you know for the for the goal scorer to to go in and, and actually score. But other than that, the Puerto Rico's defense, like I said yesterday, what it was it was a very compact, and and they played almost to perfection. Like we, they didn't want they weren't perfect they got a goal they you know, train and tobago got a goal yeah so when when sarasha notices that wait our back line is holding these guys and on our, and our um you know we have a defensive midfielder playing as a it was a 4141 um type of um formation sarasha Starts telling the guy, you know, st- start telling the team, go for it, you know, start start pushing them, and and in the even though Trent Tobago players, you know, they're tall, they're they're bulky, and you <laughs> and you compare them to the to the kids that they were playing against, mm-hmm. um, these kids were faster, and they and they were touching the ball better than the than the than the players from Trent Tobago. And the midfield was just doing circles around the the, the Trinidad Tobago um, um, team, and you know I'm, I'm I'm actually trying to be as as neutral as possible. It's, yes, I am yes. a bit happy, but it, this is what happened. This is I can't I can't change it. <laughs> I yeah, can't yeah. change the, the 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 facts. You know the facts are that uh, the 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 team that struggled more was the the visitors yeah correct i mean uh it's it's i'm i'm agreeing with you you know i think that uh our midfield looked really static uh they look shell shocked uh the the off the ball movement and the you know the breaking through the lines by puerto rico was they seemed stunned uh, like they were taking really long to adapt and that's a problem with Toronto Tobago football teams that i've noticed in the past where uh they they take some time to adjust to tactical changes in games. You know, for example, your coach, well, Puerto Rico's coach read the game, as you said, brilliantly, mm-hmm. made some quick adjustments. And our guys, I mean, it's only so much the coach can do, but this, this is a really good uh, testament to the guys that Puerto Rico has. These young guys really adapted. Their intensity was very admirable. And, you know, uh, this is not a very tactical trait, but, you know, just the, 
you know, the, uh, the fight and willpower these guys had. For example, you know, as you rightfully pointed out, physically, our players are bigger, taller in most cases. And in, it was most noticeable in aerial duels. Um, there were a lot of uh, situations. Which is, which is how their goal comes. Yeah. The, the, the chance of a goal comes because of an air ball. Mm-hmm. Two of our defense, uh, defense uh, players, they collide with a Trinidad and Tobago uh, player, at, which, which manages to um, divert the ball into the open space. And here comes his, you know, Trinidad and Tobago teammate and brings in the first goal. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, the Puerto Rico goal also came from an uh, air ball. It came, you know, uh, they they cross the ball into the left area or the northern part or, or the you know the part that is um uh, will be up in the screen yeah and then they cross it in and Ricardo uh, Rivera who had been who, who was subbed in for 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 Sydney um, he majestically heads it in to the opposing area where the where the Trinidad Tobago goalkeeper was. And I gotta say, the Trinidad Tobago goalkeeper, you that they should, you know, pay him a bonus. He stopped a few a few shots that another any other goalkeeper that would have been three uh, the, the the game would have ended three one for Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. So you know props to congrats to him. <laughs> You're right, because, uh, you know, I was speaking uh, in an off-air discussion with some guys, and the first thing that we pointed out, this is a guy that, uh, meaning our goalkeeper, you know, he, he never played for Trinidad Tobago before. This is a guy who, this is essentially his first game. And, you know, when you play with national teams, there's an element of, you know, getting adjusted to your teammates and so on. And in both games, not just against uh, Puerto Rico, but uh, Guyana, um, there were some situations where there was a mix, especially in the first game, there were some mix-ups at the back, and he bailed the defense out. There was a miscommunication with a back pass. And then in this particular game, as you said, that shot was amazing. Uh, he commanded his box really well. And, um, you know, yeah, he did. I, you. I was impressed because he has a calming presence. I looked at him during the game when things, because that first half was really rough. And, you know, you could see that he was probably the calmest guy on the field, and he had to be. He was the guy facing the most action. And, you know, that goal that eventually was scored on him, you know, was just brilliant. He couldn't do anything about that, um, you know. And to me, we, we've had a problem because ever since our last main goalkeepers were Jan Michael Williams and uh, Marvin Phillip. And we also have uh, a guy called Adrian Fonset. And, um, you know, this guy just comes in. And I guess kudos to Terry and his, uh, the coach and the scouting network. But he really stood out. I mean, if... There are a few positives in this game. He would be one of those over the two games. He's a I, new I guy. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, but, you know, back to, you know, uh, Puerto Rico, this... I, I didn't like to, the... Yeah. I didn't like the, the referee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was rubbish. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. Th- there, was a, there, there was a penalty that wasn't called for Puerto Rico. There was a, a yellow card that wasn't called for, for Trent Tobago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there was also a red card. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I think and, there was, was a, at least at least there was a a possible red card situation that could have end that, that could have shifted the, the game. Um, I'm, I'm I'm actually glad that that didn't happen. Yeah, I know I know the scenario you're thinking bad, about. but but he was bad for both sides. Yeah, and you know, MLS man, he, it has some of the worst referees. I don't <laughs> know, I don't know if it's La Liga or MLS. Or or the or the or the Liga Puerto Rico, but in between those three, I don't know which one has worse referees. Yeah, it was pretty bad. That's that's also something we noticed as well. Like I was sure it was going to be a second yellow. Um, I can't remember the scenario now, but uh, I was looking at it with some people, and I was pretty sure. And then we were speaking about it, like this guy is is crazy, man. You know, like um, you know, but as you said, you know, it's equally bad. And, you know, it could have benefited both teams in different ways, I guess. But, um, you know, in terms of uh, the, the tactical formation, Trinidad came with a 4-3-3 like we expected. And, uh, you know, Puerto Rico adapted in a very interesting way. So now Puerto Rico is now off the ball. They have that one point. Moving yeah. forward, as you said, you know, a lot of calculations have to take place. Um, a lot of things yeah, have to go. Yeah. At least 
at least Transom Eagles still has their future on their hands. Yeah. Um, I think St. Kitts has six. Um, Transom Eagles has four. And Puerto Rico has one. And, and, and as, an, as, a, as I understand it, um, Bahamas is last because of goal differential. Um, and then, you know, Puerto Rico, Guyana, Bahamas. Um, but for Puerto Rico to advance... Um, St. Kitts would have to beat Trinidad and Tobago, which I, I, I see it. There's a possibility of that happening. Mm -hmm. But also, St. Kitts would have to lose against Guyana, which is very difficult to see happening. It, it's, yeah, that one is, is harder because you just saw Guyana lose 3 0 against uh, Trinidad and Tobago. So, unless there's a paradigm shift um, between now in June and, 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 and you know miracles can happen <laughs> um, I don't see Guyana losing against uh, I mean I don't see uh, St. Kitts losing against Guyana mm -hmm. so it, in my opinion I, I think it's going to be either St. Kitts or Trinidad and Tobago uh, advancing to the next round um, if Guyana beats St. Kitts And Puerto Rico beats Bahamas and beats Guyana and and can rack up a few goals. Then we could talk about Puerto Rico fighting for that for that spot. But I just I just don't see it. I mean, it's it's a at, le at least the, the factors are not in our hands, whereas at least um, Trans Tobago still has, you know, has their. Has destiny their in their hands. So, you know, basically, uh, destiny is in uh, the hands of uh, us, I guess. And I, I was speaking to, you know, uh, my colleagues earlier, you know, uh, James Baird and, and Kevon Camel uh, from Scotland. And one is a Trini who's in Barbados right now. And we all said the same thing, you know, Trinidad and Tobago has a tendency where when we do have destiny in our, destiny in our hands, you know, sometimes, you know, we just don't rise to the occasion. We tend to buckle under pressure. And I think... While I think we were uh, fortunate to come away with a 1-1 draw in this game, I think uh, this will be a real test of this new Trinidad Tobago. Sure, there's some old guys in there, but this will be a real test to see if these guys really have what it takes to really build. Because it's, a, it's a, some young guys, and there's a sprinkled with a couple of veterans in there. But, you know, ideally, six points would have given them that uh, cushion they would have needed, which we said before. But I think, you know, this is me being glass half full. I think maybe... You know, getting that slap in the face that there's no easy games really in this region. You know, um, no disrespect to Bahama, uh, Bahamas, but, you know, you just never know in this game. So, you know, uh, moving along from that point, I think Trinidad, while destiny is in our hands, I think um, our own worst enemy is ourselves because we have a lot of off-field problems. There's a lot of problems uh, that's well documented that's going on Trinidad Tobago football. So uh, hopefully by now until uh, June, is it? Um, there should at least iron out some of those problems. I, I, I hope because it would be... I honestly don't want to see St. Kitts <laughs> advancing to the next round. <laughs> to my people from St. Kitts, you, know, you, you understand what we're saying. I, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Nathan, but I just don't want to see St. Kitts advancing to the next round. We're going to have to get Nathan on to defend himself. Nathan, the, the invitation is here. Come on, defend, defend. Uh, so, you know, I mean, we're, we're not, you know, time is, we have, unfortunately, you know, I have time restrictions, but, you know, based on the game today, the two games uh, Puerto Rico played, you know, I know the, 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 the first loss was not ideal. And then getting this result today, you mentioned before that this coach only came in a couple of weeks ago. So is uh, this uh, exciting for you knowing that he only had a short it, it period of time? Because, it is because it, I, I actually feel, uh, personally, I feel... Like, um, I was right, and mm -hmm. I was, and and all of the criticisms that I actually made sports wise towards the former coach and saying that you know we're we're not doing well because of the coach, not because of the players. Um, I I feel vindicated. <laughs> yeah, I, I I feel vindicated. Um, Sarashan has has, uh, I I feel that you know. Sarajan has actually started to turn the ship and, you know, 
we could see a uh, we could see a fight going for the group F um, of the qualifiers, and that's exciting. I mean, look, if Puerto Rico doesn't advance, it's fine. We, we you know we technically started this you know without any hopes of advancing, but if we do pass and miracles do happen, and we actually reach the the second round for the third time in our history, well. That's awesome too. Yeah, because from what I've seen today, I, I, I'm, I would be very happy for you guys if I was from uh, Puerto Rico because what I saw today was really impressive. I know that you explained to me that he's only been there for a short period of time. That's even more impressive uh, because I was really impressed with what I saw today uh, with the mentality of the players. And, you know, I'm, I mean, of course, it was not a perfect game, but I think that's a very positive sign moving forward. Uh, I, see, I see the difference between... Um, between what we had and what we now have mm -hmm. and i'm saying you know props to the federation for for actually listening and you know at least to the players if they didn't listen to me because of personal ben uh, political vendettas and but they did listen to the players i'm actually happy that they actually listened to the players and and they you know they understood that the coach that they had was rubbish should have never been hired and I'm glad he's out and we have Sarasha. Overall, what is your, your, your final verdict over, you know, the two games? Well, I can't really talk about the St. Kitts um, game because I didn't watch it. No, oh, yeah, yeah. I couldn't um, find any information at all, so that was... Because there, there, there was no... None to find. Yeah. There was only, you know, updates, cha um, you know, changes, red, yellow cards or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but from what I saw, um, in, in to last night or tonight, uh, in, in my OS, I'm actually, you know, I'm happy. I'm, 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 I'm okay with what I saw. I, I want things to be better. I think, uh, I, I had this, um, this debate with one of my, uh, one of the co-founders of Football Boricua. Mm -hmm. after the game live mm -hmm. he was no you know he, he was pro Sydney Rivera I'm like no I mean we have we have players that are making goals we need goals we we need if you're going to bring somebody that if you're going to nationalize a player and I think we talked about this um, last time if you're going to nationalize a player it has to be because you don't have somebody else that's better than him in, in involved and we do we do we have um uh, you know at least we have uh, Hector Pito Ramos he's our he's basically the historical goal goal scorer he's you know he's scoring goals he scored a goal against San, San Cristobal um the team from the, the pro team from the Dominican Republic in a friendly between Metropolitan Football Academy and San Cristobal um a few weeks ago Um, they were getting ready for the for the for the Concacaf Club Shield um, that's going on in your you know Curacao. Mm -hmm. I think it's now now in April. It, it, you know he scored a goal, it, so he's scoring goals. Whereas we have this player that has no club because Sydney Rivera has no club. He's he he's he's a free agent and. Okay, he's you know he's maybe you know he's 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 maybe what the federation is looking for, but he's not what the team needs in terms of in terms of goal scoring. Mm -hmm. We need a goal scorer. We don't need um, you know leadership. You can get leadership from other places. So you know there has to be a balance, and I think right now the the, the team, aside from leadership, he has a a lot of leaders right now. Yeah needs goals it needs in its firepower and i think that's what we're missing that well, yeah that spark of you know goal scoring well you're definitely right because that's what i saw today because if they converted the chances at least mm -hmm. in the first half as you rightfully said it could have easily been you know this game could have ended 3-1 or yep. at least maybe kill the game in the first half um yep. because i was literally at the edge of my seat because I was like, oh, goodness, let's just get to halftime, but nil-nil, and then uh, <laughs> Terry Fennick is going to go in and 
you know, give them a, a real uh, Sir Alex Ferguson type, uh, you know, halftime talk, hopefully. <laughs> and you did see, you know, because I, I know his personality and I could tell you this. Yeah, he was, he's the kind of guy, he's not, a, he's not a fool. I've worked with him before. He, he's, he obviously saw what was going on and, you know, the, the mentality is, uh, and, and, and maybe the game management and mentality is something that uh, we need to work on because while Trinidad Tobago has a lot of talented players, you know, culturally, you know, we're very relaxed people, you know, very chill. And sometimes we need some, that little more than a spark, just to just ignite players and get them activated to fire them up. And uh, sometimes you need a guy like Terry to do that because I think uh, you didn't really see that. As I said at the beginning of this uh, video, they were shell-shocked. But, you know, I think he has a, a couple of weeks to really get it together. And, you know, the, the errors were very obvious. I have, to, yeah. I, have to, um, I have to fix something I said on the last, on the last interview. Mm -hmm. um, Puerto Rico actually played in front of a crowd of 600 VIPs. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask you about that. So. Yeah, there was, there, there were, what happened was the Federation said, no, we're, we're not going to, oh, we're not going to have this game open to the public. Mm -hmm. But that didn't mean that they weren't going to have invites. And what they did was they, 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 they rounded up all of the, you know, people, um, they invited, I think it was one or two people from each uh, member club, you know, clubs that are affiliated with the Federation. And they told them, hey, you can come. And so, so you have around 600 people going. And I think, I think playing in front of a crowd, like I said on the, on the, on the last interview, um, playing in front of a crowd actually helped fuel Puerto Rico. Because it's different as a player. It's very different playing in front of a empty stadium mm -hmm. with nobody cheering you on versus playing in front of a, a small crowd that is, you know, cheering you on. And it's also, you know, family members. So you're playing in front of a family that, you know, that could be maybe nerve wracking for some, but for others, it, it fuels you. So I'm just thinking. Um, that could also be one factor um, of why Puerto Rico um, was playing the way it was playing. Yeah, because uh, I heard the crowds when I was uh, looking at the game. I was like, hmm. And, you know, when, when the calls weren't going the right way, I was like, it even sounds like if you didn't know any better, based on the audio that you were hearing, it sounded like, you know, there were proper large amounts of fans you in had, there. So You had audio because my, 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 my feed had no audio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's terrible, you know. Well, listen, oh, I was just, it, yeah. for me, for, for me, it's fine because you know I'm, I'm 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 in discord commenting the game with with other with, with other um you know with other fans of the of the website mm -hmm. um but you know when you see the the, the three people <laughs> coming up uh, and they're 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 talking and you have absolutely no idea what they're saying it's <laughs> <laughs> it, you start playing lip reading <laughs> yes yes reading of lips Yes, that's where the art of covering the mouth comes in handy. But um, yeah, <laughs> I, I did hear some audio because I'm just glad that we actually got the game because that's a problem we've had in Trinidad Tobago where seeing our national team is actually not a guaranteed thing um, for many years. You know, that's a topic. Uh, there was rights issues and whatever, but that's for a whole other show. So, you know, um, you know, we're going to end things off. So, folks, if you're wondering who this uh, very energetic gentleman is, Mr. Edwin Husino. You know, the chief editor of footballboricua.net, a guy who knows everything there is to know about Puerto Rican football. And that, tell us about that scarf, man. Let, let's hear about it before we oh, go. Oh, well, this scarf is, is a, uh, um, it's, it's in the other way around. Yeah. Um, it's in Spanish, obviously, but it's, it's my company's scarf. Um, it says, I am football. Very and nice. And the other side, it says, uh, football boricua. And it's a it's a very nice scarf. It's you know it's a very professionally made scarf um, done in England. And you know we we give this to our patreons, um, to our uh, ultra or above uh, patreons, as a gift. You know because you're investing in us, so we give you something cool uh, to remember us by. <laughs> so yeah, that's this awesome. Is it, and, and the funny, the the I wanted it to be um, in the colors of the flag, mm -hmm. so it's um, dark blue, 
white and red and you know it's it's it has the strings also so um it's a i i, I actually enjoy it it keeps me very um warm when i'm in the studio so so yeah i yeah. I, I like it and and I, i like to wear it if i'm going to be at the stadium sharing for puerto rico so i I love it, man. It looks great. Looks great. Uh, I, and you, you maybe inspired me to maybe try to create one of my own. I'll have to go and try to design my own. Yeah, it's. Oh, oh, oh you can also. I see it also has a Puerto Rico flag. Oh, there we go. There we go. So some, you could put the the Trans Tobago flag there also. Yes, yes. You know. So I'll actually, you know, I'll. You inspired me to now create my own uh, EXTV uh, scarf. <laughs> <laughs> which i mean i have my whole i have my generic uh turn tobago scarves but i want to make my own so folks yeah. you know uh you know where to get one so you know support support him and uh, you'll get a lovely scarf i'm going to definitely get get one myself so listen once again it's an absolute pleasure to have you on it's been amazing you know we, i think we had uh, two really great episodes so far and we'll definitely do more uh, i had a lot of technical issues today all sort of joined in on the uh, yeah. <laughs> the discord but unfortunately uh i'll explain that maybe in the other um episode what took place tune in next time to find out yeah. what happens next <laughs> the crazy life of andre but uh listen edwin it's been a pleasure and uh you know we'll definitely chat some more about this folks don't be afraid to like subscribe comment throw questions at myself or edwin or whoever else or james everybody likes to ask james questions our man from scotland and um keep watching and so edwin you know listen you know i unfortunately i have to go but it's it's been amazing and i will definitely do some more shoots folks you know where to find i'll put links find us i'll put links in the description below to both our uh, websites and respective social media and uh thank you for watching folks and we have world cup qualifiers that will be coming up in june but i'm pretty sure we have a lot of football to talk about in between so like i said a million times thank you for joining us and edwin it's been a pleasure you too just to remind everyone for more episodes with shaka his luck be sure to head over to our youtube channel also don't forget to subscribe for more updates interviews and content